first world order radio finally finally we are on the air no doubt all right all right there's always gonna be somebody in the building on first world order radio begin on into some of that order consciousness tonight First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. And others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceed in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, getting your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know how intention is straight out. All right, so I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient history school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're gonna take this level up a notch. We're gonna have stuff to do here. This is not just gonna be about philosophies and theories, shit that works. First World of Radio, Dr. Aline, your host, is here, as well as also co-host, Brother Fahim. Are you here, brother? Uh huh. I tell you, what's it, Taif? Dr. Aline? Yeah, I tell you, what's it, Taif? How you doing, Doc? How you I'm doing very well, very well, brother. Happy birthday to you. All right, appreciate that, appreciate that. And um, we definitely going to be getting in tonight, and we're going to be dealing with um, some good information. Um, it's going to be Ogun, the metaphysics of the heart. Um, and we're um, going to be getting real deep with brother um, Yuya um, tonight. So we're going to bring him on in. Greetings. Hey, greeting, peace, brother. Peace, peace, peace brother. How you doing, brother? Yeah. I'm good. I'm doing. I'm doing pretty well this evening. Doing, I'm doing really well. How How y'all doing? I'm doing well, brother. All right, we're doing well. Excellent, excellent. Just busy, but we we trying to make it. <laughs> yeah, I know what it be like. Oh, yeah. I understand, brother. We uh-huh. trying to run these things and, and keep it moving and keep the information out for the people. It's a hectic work. Mm-hmm. I understand. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, so what you got for tonight about organ and um, the metaphysics of the heart? Where you want to deal with that topic and where you want to go at with Okay, cool. Well, you know, first off, I want to definitely thank you for uh, having me on again. And, um, oh, you know, cool last job. time, thank you. Yeah, I was here. We were able to kind of cover some, some Arisha information, and I was basically right. looking to you know, bring up a, a basic understanding for those who may not have been aware uh, of the more scientific aspects of the Orisha. But uh, even in, in this tradition or in this, this European understanding, there is so much more going on in the uh, what we'll call the spiritual ecosystem aside from Orisha. And there's one key piece, it's something that I touched on last time, and I spoke about this energy or this force known as the Ori, it's spelled O-R-I, and I explained that the Ori is is not only the aura, not only the understanding of your own soul and spirit, but your doppelganger, your over-spirit, your higher self, okay? And what I wanted to speak about this evening was uh, this understanding of the Okan, and Okan is spelled O-K-A-N, Okan. And in our Yoruba understanding, or just 
we'll just deal with the language for a moment. Uh, the word okan means heart. Okay, so it is heart. So we're speaking about your flesh heart, your physical and biological heart, but we're also speaking about the conceptual understanding of the heart. And in the Yoruba understanding, uh, well, I, I should say the Yoruba uh, temple understanding when we're dealing with, with Ifa and when we're dealing with the Risha, the heart is not just a, an emotional centerpiece, but the heart itself is a realm. And within that realm of the heart, it has its own dimensional architecture, okay? So just like we have uh, IA, which is spelled A-Y-E, IA, and IA is the residence or the place of the person, okay? In the Yoruba tradition, we separate the soul from the person. The person we call Inyan, and, in, and the Inyan lives in IA because we understand that the person is created through the expression of spirit and through the intention and the destiny that's been laid out by the soul, okay? But we have something that stands over the, the, uh, the person who's seeking to master the mind of the person and is witnessing the mastering of the mind of the person. And in that realm where your ori resides, is that the name of that realm is the okan, again, O-K-A-N. Um, Anyone who may be familiar with Yoruba, you probably know also that um, Okan, it also means the number one. Okay. Hmm. Interesting thing about, about Yoruba, uh, for anyone who's ever tried to study it, you know it's, it's, it's a complicated language because it's all tonal. You know, it's very hard to just pick up a book, say, on Yoruba and, and then get it. You've got you to gotta hear those tones, and sometimes it's so subtle, it's like one word. One spelling can mean ten different things, uh, but but the reason that is is because the Yoruba language it is deeply entrenched in metaphysics. Okay, so uh, one thing just doesn't mean one thing, but what one word does is it opens up a gateway or a portal to a certain type of understanding, and the, depending on how you inflect the tone of that word, will decide which dimension you go within that realm that you just opened up with that word. Okay, so we have the Okan. When we say Okan, Okan, we know that we're opening up that heart realm, okay, which is considered to be the seat of our intelligence. It's not just the seat of our soul, but it's the seat of our intelligence. But understanding that it also means one, uh, and I want I wanted to just qualify that that term one uh, it doesn't signify quantity, but when we say one in this instance, it signifies the order of manifestation. So it's more of a sequential thing. So when we say one, con, K-A-N, it should also be noted that con is also one in Medu. Uh, for those of you who do know who, it's, who are listening, the Yoruba culture comes out of the Kemetic culture. It was considered mm -hmm. um, out of the southern region. So the the cool thing about that is that, you know, you can, um, though many people will tell you, you know, and many many people have spoken against me in terms of uh, mixing traditions, as they, they like to say, but the truth mm. is it really is all one, you know, it's, it's, it's one. Exactly. Two, yeah. Yeah, you, you know, brother, because, you know, I listen to, to, to your work, and I've been following your work for years, and obviously you understand that science of assimilation, of taking you know, different information and understanding the truth in it. The only thing that differs, the only time we find a difference in information is when it's a lie. So everyone should understand that the truth is always going to be the same thing, and the part that's, that's different, that separates it, that contradicts is going to be the false part. And that's in any tradition. I don't care what you study. You know, when you put them all together and put them in a bag, the truth will stand as that which is the same. You know, um, so, yeah, that, that idea of Khan, K-A-N, which we have in Medu, uh, but also, you know, etymologically in Yoruba, Khan, K-A-N, also means one as well. So it's that one, that primal, that primordial one that Khan represents. Okay, so um, O Khan, whenever you have the O, and I kind of mentioned this last time, uh, when you have that O, 
you're dealing with ownership. Anytime you see O in the Yoruba language, it means either the owner of or the spirit of. It means that every time. Okay, so it's an easy way for you to start kind of breaking down words and figuring out, you know, what, what they're actually saying here. You know, for instance, we just had a uh, what they call a blood moon last night, and uh, and in this tradition, the or this language, the moon, the name of the moon is Osu, Osu, O S U, Osu, and some may notice that that's very similar to the spelling of Oshun, which is O S U N. Okay, and then we also have Odus by the name of Irosun, and Oshun. Or osu, it means the source, okay? And when you have irosun, it means the source in which blood comes. So irosun deals with the, that mentis, the idea of the mentis, and it relates itself, again, to the uh, moon. And osu also relates itself to the word kansu, who we know in our comedic structure with the night traveler of the moon, which was an was a, a implication towards the menstrual cycle going to that night of melanin, all right? Um, and this is directly connected to our understanding of Okan, and I'm going to get into that. Um, and by the way, brother, if I, you know, you, if, if, I, if you want me to just keep going, I can keep going, but if you want me to pause in between, because I know, I know you you uh, have your own perspective, you may want to inject, just let me know. Oh, I'm no, okay. continue on, brother, continue on. Oh, okay. um, brother right. um, Fahim, did you have something to say? Uh, I just uh, I, I guess we probably get on the thing about uh, uh, what they call the uh, the homo homo uh, cysteine uh, around the heart. I know you know about that. The homo cysteine? No, I don't. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was it, it, it calls it. They call it the, uh, what it's called is the inflammation of the heart arteries. And Mm -hmm. uh, most people don't know if their heart arteries are ever inflamed because they have stopped uh, uh, checking how physicals on those, uh, medical tests on those in the early 1920s. Mm -hmm. And this would be kind of detriment to the uh, medical profession if they found out that that would solve a lot lot of heart disease on Mm -hmm. a large scale. And uh, so they have stopped at the physical, you know, uh, checking on to see if your homocysteine is okay. So, yeah, that's okay. that's what's going on also. Okay. And um, the, but the conspiracy you were talking about, yeah. I'm, and I'm gonna I'm gonna add to that for all my my Orisha people, as you know, the heart obviously pumps blood through the body. And when we're dealing with the heart chakra, we're dealing with the Orisha Ogun. Mm -hmm. A lot of times people that think that the heart is mainly dealing with Oshun, because as soon as you think about the heart, you're thinking about love. But you have to understand that uh, in the Yoruba structure, love and life are synonymous with with each other. We have a word for love, it's Ife. We have a a word for life, it's Ife. And it is said that life began in Ile Ife. Ile means house which that means the house of love and the house of life. Okay, so it's that vitality of life that is considered love. So what the elder was just speaking about in terms of these possible conditions with the heart, you know, if if you wanted to apply uh, any Orisha formula to that, the the advice would be to begin with Ogun, to begin Mm -hmm. with Ogun when you're dealing with with inflammations and part with artery, the the, the roads, because not only he's the owner of the roads, but he's the owner of the road, the road, the bloodway. Okay. And interesting enough, uh, the word or the name Ogun means herbs, the owner of the spirit of herbs. Okay. So, you know, I know we always think Ogun is just militancy and taking machetes and cutting through the woods and killing up people, but um, his first responsibility is a master herbalist. Okay. So, you know, relating it again to heart condition, you know, as the elder was, was speaking on. I think uh, you want to look there first. Uh, one of the things that I'm always looking to and looking to share with people is the sobriety of the Ifa tradition. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of times when you start speaking about Orisha, you start speaking about Ifa, it gets so cartoonish that you can't really get anywhere. 
people start telling you, you know, don't put this one on this shrine, this one fights with that, and it, it, it's just silly. And there's a deep metaphysical value held, in, not only in the Yoruba language, but held in these formulas that we call Orisha, because what they actually are are cosmic formulas more than anything, you know, more than your friend or the one who rules your head or whatever you've been told. They're actually formulas who live within their own matrix of understanding. They have their own heavens and they have their own hell. But when you move beyond the matrix and, and the traps of polarity that the Orisha have for you, you move into the realm of the Okan. And in the Okan is where there is no formation of duality. There is no positive, negative, right, wrong. That, that whole understanding doesn't even exist. That doesn't exist until we come into what we call IA or the, the astral planes, and that's where we have the formation of colors, the formations of images come into play and how things uh, look. When we're dealing with the Okan realm, we're dealing with straight consciousness and light. We're dealing with consciousness and light, okay? So obviously if we're dealing with light, there's an alternative realm which is going to bring us to darkness. We'll, we'll get into in a moment, but um, the there's an there's an Odu that's associated with Okan or this idea of the heart or this idea of the seat of the soul, and that particular Odu is Okoran Meji. Okoran Meji. Okoran is O K A N R A N. Okay, Meji is spelled M E J I. And Meji or Eji in Yoruba just means twin or twins. Okoran itself means to know. Okay, it brings us into that that concept and that string of co- cognition that um, lets us know things. But it's more so the um, the validation of knowledge using subjective certainty. Okay, so the the, the certainty remains subjective because it's subject to um, to review after the reformation of a person's worldview, okay, so, or, or the reformation of a person's world expansion. So what this basically means when you're tapping into the realm or the energy of Okoran, meaning to know, uh, you're tapping into knowledge that is only uh, validated by your certainty of your current worldview, which expands once you take in new knowledge. So in essence, we're dealing with... Uh, the mutation and the expansion of truth. Okay, it, it, it's truth is always a subjective certainty. All right. Um, now, something that's also in that the name of that Odu Okoran. You, you notice you have Okan, but then at the, on the back end you have the word Ron. Ron is a very uh, important word in Yoruba tradition because Ron means to call. Okay, uh, or it also means to send out or to recite or to remember. Okay, so when you say the Odu Okran, you're saying, I'm calling out the heart. I'm sending the heart. I'm reciting the heart. I'm remembering the heart. Because why is it so important to remember, recite, and to recall the heart? Because the heart is where your, where your, your real self or your ori, the I, resides. Okay, um, the I is considered a force. Okay, and it is the potentiality of the seer. Remember, because the eye, the seer, that resides in, in, in the Okan, is watching you, the person, master your mind. Okay, it's witnessing the mastering of your mind. Okay, uh, the Okan is the domicile of, the high, of your higher consciousness. So now we'll take it right back to English. So I'm saying the heart, the conceptual, the metaphysical, the esoteric, Heart is the actual domicile, the place where, where, where your your higher consciousness resides. Okay, because we always when we start speaking about higher consciousness, a lot of times we, we're looking all over the place, we're looking over our head, inside of our head, and our, our first eye, so forth and so on. And all of those things, from your belly button to the back of your neck to your first eye, they all serve a purpose in your ascension. But I'm just speaking about the year of a you know, and, and other concepts may look a little bit different, but um, in a Yoruba concept, it is the heart that holds the domicile. Uh, and like I said, it's considered a realm 
of its own with its own dimensional uh, arch- architecture. So, going back to the Odu of Opera, right? Uh, just to give a little bit of information, especially for those of you who are listening who actually uh, deal with Odu or are trying to learn Odu, um, there's, there's a critical thing when you read in Pataki dealing with this, this Odu, Okoran. And one of the first things you'll find is that in most of the Pataki's, and Pataki's are the stories, uh, the fables, um, the information that associated with each Odu. And the Odu, as I said in the first show, means womb. The word Odu means womb, just like in the name Olodumare. So the name Olodumare means the owner of the serpent's womb. Mare means serpent, and remember O, told you whenever you have that O, that means ownership, so, or the spirit of. Olodumare is the owner of the serpent's womb. Okay, that is the uh, one of the supreme beings <laughs> in, in the Yoruba tradition. Okay, but that's the supreme being that we're able to conceptualize because that's the one who actually came out into the light. So Right, so that would uh, be equivalent to what we refer to as the universal energy or pranakotaling. In the Sanskrit uh, Yes um, But it, the interesting thing about um, Olodumare is that it's, it's the Olodumare is the product Of the universal energy hmm. The um, Universal energy You know we have to kind of go back to that triple stage darkness So again if we're dealing with the, with the Kabbalistic system When we, we're dealing mm-hmm. with Sof and Sof Ur That which, which exists before Kether and you kind of almost want to associate Olodumare with Kether, the crown, because being the, the owner of the serpent's womb, taking us even to our comedic Atumare, what we're speaking about is the atomic beginnings of something. When something decides to form itself into something, when something decides to define itself. Okay, so Olodumare, we can conceptualize to some small degree because this is when the universal energy decided to to define, to make a definition for itself. But again, we have to acknowledge what was the energy that even decided to do that, you know. So that, that goes closer um, a bit to, to, to what you're speaking. You know, um, there, there are, and that's, that's the thing, Brother Aline, you know, in this tradition, uh, so many people, they think it's like only Orisha, or they think it's just Orisha ancestors and Oludumari. And right. there's so many other forces at work. And more mm-hmm. importantly, um, and a lot of people may not even want to hear this, you actually don't need any of those forces. The only force you actually need is your ori, which is your higher self. That's mm-hmm. even right. in okay. certain fables. That's in certain phrases, you know, um, certain patakis. You don't need ancestors. You don't need orisha. Um, you don't, and some people don't even work with orisha or ancestors or odu. They just work with themselves. Okay, these are all tools that were, that were given to us, you know, and that's where it gets a little confusing sometimes for our people because they bring this religious mindset into it and they have to find something to worship, something to humble themselves to, uh, and something outside of themselves that they have to acknowledge as redeeming them or reclaiming them. And unfortunately, because of that, many people get stuck in their, in their understanding of the Yoruba tradition. It's hard for them to move forward, and, it, and it's very hard for them to conceptualize what actual Yoruba culture is saying. One of the things right. that helps that, again, is learning the language, or some of the language. I know it's hard, but, you know, learning some of the language. Um, you know, a, a good example of that, Brother Aileen, is um, the term I, or the word I um, that we have. You know, I mean, you know, like the individual. And... Yoruba structure, the word I is mo, M-O, is mo. That means I. And you have M-E, which means the self. But more importantly, if you take mo and you flip it around, you have om. And om, as you know, is considered the highest part of one's being. You know, right. so um, it, it's 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 kind of like, uh, it's very difficult because some people will immediately think, oh, this, must, this sounds like some form of self-idolatry. I'm worshiping myself. But in truth, you're empowering yourself and you're mastering self for the purposes of actually honoring the most high. You know. Um, 
And that particular Odu or that idea of Okoran speaks to that heavy. For instance, uh, with Okoran uh, or Okanran, again, remember, we're dealing with the calling of the heart. Uh, the physical element that's, that's associated with that Odu is carbon. Okay, and in our Yoruba mythology, carbon is talked about left and right all over, but we never really, it, it's hard for us to pinpoint because they don't use the word carbon. Um, right. And as I'm sure you've spoken to your, your listeners, and I know you have a very educated audience, you know that carbon is, is a form of melanin. And the way that carbon is always recited and called in the Yoruba Pasakis is they use the term forest. Whenever you hear them speaking about the forest, they're actually speaking about carbon. Okay? So, again, there's so much, you know, for instance, even um, the sign, the, the Odu of Okonan, it associates itself with the planet Mercury, which we also know is one of the words for carbon. You see, so um, when you're going into that heart realm, when you're going into the heart, what you're doing actually is you're going into the darkness of your own melanin. And mm-hmm. that's where knowing is found. That's why Okoran means to know. In order to know, you have to go into that corruptive and transforming darkness to know. You know. So um it's it's a critical piece in terms of that, in terms of understanding the um association with the heart. And uh especially understanding the Yoruba concept of the heart. It's not this um amorous uh, concept of love that we have, and you know, I felt it was it was it is critical, was critical to address because um, some of the questions that I've been coming across my desk lately, in terms of how we should regard each other and how we should regard love and so forth, and uh, it's a term that so many uh, do not understand, and they associate it with Yoruba stories about the heart, about the Okan, and they're mixing in uh, romance. They're mixing in Roman ideas with these European and these comedic ideas. And this is where people right, are give me a good example. really confused. Uh, okay. Um, so a lot of times people will speak about Oshun, right? And, again, I, I gave mm-hmm. the example, not the example, but I broke down a name earlier, how Oshun relates itself to the moon. And what we're really dealing there with there is the menses and blood and, and, and the traveling right. of things at night, even at Draconis strain. It's related to Oshun. Dracula is related to Oshun. The dragon mm-hmm. is related to Oshun. But as soon as you say the word Oshun, people get these warm feelings and they say, okay, I, I want to I wanna find a mate. Um, what ritual can I do to Oshun to find love? Okay? Because they're looking for amorous love. And they don't really understand that Oshun is more dealing with the source of where you come from. The word Oshun also means the source. Okay, so you would invoke Oshun. Certainly you can invoke Oshun to draw forces together because Oshun governs the realm of dark matter. But you really want to deal with Oshun to dig into the traditions of your ancestors because Oshun takes you back to the source. The rivers always run back to their source. That's really what you're dealing with. You know, but, but you know, so um, because we see images of Oshun with the heart, when you look in the Vodun tradition, uh, more particular, you know, the um, Haitian Vodun, you see the images of, of Urzuli Freda, and she has the heart, and we begin to believe that this is talking about amorous romance. And it, and it really has nothing to do with that. It's talking about the seat of your consciousness and the source of your consciousness when we're dealing with, with the heart. All right. Yeah. No. Um. So and we know his something. We know Go ahead, brother. I'm listening. I was saying, I know even in the Hebrew, of course, the heart would be the equivalent to what we call the holy place. Um, you know, we were looking at the structure of the Mosaic temple. You have the outer gate, the um, holy place, and then, of course, the holy of holies, which symbolizes um, Ori, mm-hmm. um, as you stated earlier, uh, you know, or, you know, our soul or higher self or, you know. Right. Um, so definitely, you know, um, that that's why we do what we do as far as study the metaphysics because we understand that there's a common thread that runs through all of the belief systems because um, all of the belief systems had to have derived from one. And so by mm-hmm. um, understanding that, you know, we get a more complete um, understanding of understanding of, you know, of what we really, 
you know, need to be focusing on, and that, of course, is um, the physical body and the components of the physical body, you know, as it, you know, as it relates to as above, so below, as within, so without. So um, that, 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 and that's why I love, you know, what you teach, brother, because um, that, that is, you know, where we need to be, you know, having the greatest understanding of, of the information, especially coming from our African um, religions. You know, Yoruba, Ifa, Khan, um, you know, ancient Kemetic, or whatever the case is, you know. Um, you know, so we definitely need to be doing that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Right. That. You know, it's, it's that, again, like you said, it, we can't really exclude anything. You said something so key is that it, it gives us the full picture because so many of the traditions have been invaded that when you just, when you read about a particular archetype or you read about a particular concept and you don't allow yourself to see the broader brushstrokes, the broader picture, the global picture, or the cosmic picture, then you really are now just having to kind of take things on face value without gaining an understanding or a definition for yourself. And now you've just religiousized yourself all over again because you didn't, right. you didn't get that understanding. So even if I say, hey, Oshun deals with this, and you don't take the time to find out, well, who's, who's Venus, who's Aphrodite, um, learning about the Kabbalistic system, or what, what Sephiroth does Oshun reside on, you know, and, and learn the full picture of what's happened, who's Mary Magdalene, you know, just go through it, you know. Um, right. Then, it's, it's, very, then, then you, it's very difficult to gain your own understanding, you know. It's, like, very interesting what you said, and even the, the correlation uh, when you were speaking about the Ori and the holiest of the holies, right, um, in this tradition, we have um, a term, ara, A-R-A. And ara, in this tradition, means body, or just in the language, it means mm-hmm. body. So one of the things we'll say sometimes is the ori ara. But more importantly, because, uh, again, <laughs> you know, like we said earlier, the Yoruba came out of Kemet. Okay, they migrated, right. uh, you know, out of Kemet. So I know as soon as I said ara, you hear something in there. You right. hear that, that word ra, right? So... Ara, it means body, but more importantly, it means the seat of Ra. So the, it's, even in this tradition, the body is considered to be the seat of Ra. And you even have a term, Ra Ra. Ra Ra is used, and Ra Ra means lightning. Okay? So it's an interesting word that we have here. Knowing that Ra is the seat of, or the Ara, the body is the seat of Ra. Ra Ra means lightning. We have a Yoruba word, uh, which is Irawo, Irawo. And Irawo means star, okay? And uh, uh, Ra, you know, Iwa, you know, that, that's um, Wo. Well, we'll, we'll go to Wo for a second. Wo means uh, something that has set or something that has gone down, something that has set or something that has gone down. And Ra, or Ra Ra, means lightning or the lightning aspect of God. You know, one of the old names for Shango, his original name was Jakuta Re or Jakuta Ra. Jakuta meant the stone thrower. And what that meant was stones, we were talking about meteorites. Mm-hmm. Okay, now this associates right. ourselves to, to the Kaaba stone. But we're talking about meteorites, and those meteorites would come down, and that was also considered lightning, because Jakuta Ra or Jakuta Re means Ra. It's the same Ra from Kenneth. You know, so right. when you have that concept right. again, so when you have the idea of the star, Iwawo, Iwawo literally means Ra has come to this place or Ra has been here. Right. So right. And, and then reflection. even in the ancient Kemetic, right, even in the ancient mm-hmm. Kemetic, it te- you know, that Ur-Ra, you know, U-R-R-A, Ur-Ra, is the great light. And, of course, you know, right. that developed mm-hmm. into, um, into Arabic and later on is, you know, Allah. You know, and Muslims mm-hmm. even today still say Allah. You know, you right. L-L-A-D. Right. You know, so, right. you know, you know that goes back to what you're saying. Is that mm-hmm. it, It's all connected. And the key is with it all is. of this, what we're it speaking is. about is a traveling back to the one. And that, that mm-hmm. was really, or is really, um, I guess that the, the ultimate point <laughs> That uh, you know, I, I'm I wanted to deliver in this evening that when you're dealing with the okan or the idea of the heart, or even as we're sitting here loving and and just you know enjoying this new energy of the blood moon and, and so forth and so on, 
understanding what it really means is a traveling back to the source. And that is one of the, like it or not, you know, uh, the advantages of living here in the West where where uh, a saw resurrects itself. But, you know, living here in the, in the West, uh, it allows us now to break down some of the walls of nations that we had before, these dividing walls uh, that began to build up over time where we weren't sharing and dabbling in these traditions. Just in the, just in the short time that you and I have spoken here, we've spoken about the Hebrew uh, paradigm, we've spoken about Yoruba, we've spoken about Akan, you know, uh, Grecian, you know, so uh, we've been able, and Kemetic, of course, we've been able to do so much geographical travel because we're, 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 we're both leaning, or all three of us are leaning on that one, that Akan, that Khan, you know, um, that one rhythm, that one beat, that downbeat, or that Om, going back to, again, the, the concept of the Om. You know, the, the awakening of the earth or the highest part of self, which mm-hmm. is the mo or the om. You know, so, you know, it's it's a critical thing to kind of understand because, uh, like I said, just with Yoruba tradition and even, you know, the, the traditions and the people you may who you may encounter, um, when you start speaking about Ifa and Arisha and Babala and whatnot, a lot of times people get a little dismissive. And I understand <laughs> because, there are a lot of people in the tradition who are just about a lot of spookism, you know, and, right. oh, man, if you right. feed them this, they're going to do this. You feed them that, they're going to do that. And right. I have to tell you, the tradition, I just I just came back from the continent, you know, just a couple of weeks ago. And the, the elders over there, they're not even on it like that. The elders over there are studying, studying the Kabbalah. You see, right. now that, that would be a, a big shock <laughs> for <laughs> all the, the Orisha and Ifa people over here in the States who, who thinking they still doing, you know, the stuff that you're getting here, that's not really the fire. You know, you got to go there and you got to get in with the elders and you'll see that they're not even studying what you think they're studying. You know, they, they understand the unity of it. And this is how they're making things happen, how they're trying to get their oil back and, and do some real work, you know. Um, and, again, it brings us to that concept and the notion of the, of the oneness of the Okan you know, of going back to the source and calling the heart, which was really, um, as you probably know, which is one of the the main functions of the salute, or what we also call the salat. You know, uh, we know that dua is prayer, but that salat was really a salute to the heart. Okay, calling Mm -hmm. the heart forth, singing inside of the heart, singing to the heart. You know, even that number five is significant because that's Oshun's number. You know, uh, so singing and enlivening that heart chakra is critical because at that point, you know, at that gateway, you decide which way you want to go with this thing. If I want to fall into Aye, into the colors of the lowest chakra, or if I want to go up, you know, into the um, oblivion and the, inf- the, the infiniteness, infiniteness of the higher chakra. You know, so, um, yeah, that one, that one is critical. Right. I don't want to hog all the space here, so I'm, I'm giving you up some space. Oh, no, 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 no. That's, I mean, that's excellent, <laughs> brother. I mean, um, you know, I, I love the way in which that, um, you you know, you're putting it together. I mean, that's the way that all of us need to be doing it so that we can get, like I said, a complete picture. You know, I, it's, it's, yeah. to me, this whole thing is like, a, um, you know, like, you know, there's pieces of a puzzle, you know, and, you know, there's places in which that, um, I, I mean, even when I got into Islam, I mean, um, you know, over t- you know, 25 years ago, I mean, we was taught off the bat. You seek knowledge to the cradle to the grave. You seek knowledge even if it's in China. So, mm. um, and that continued, you know, so even while I was, you know, Muslim or Islamic, I continued, you know, I, I, was, I was going to the Buddhist temple. You know, I was going, <laughs> you know, to the mm-hmm. um, Hindu um, temples, you know, yeah. I was still studying um, everything, you know, and mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. Um, the Moorish thing was just, you know, just just another step. When I seen, you know, on the court, of course, it states, you know, that we honor all prophets, you know, whether how or right. allegorical they are, but Jesus, Muhammad, Buddha, Confucius. So, and then, you know, that right there just say, okay, this is where you have to learn how to become universal in your thinking, you know, and um, 
Mm-hmm. You just can't be, you know, put in a box in just one particular belief system or faith because right. a belief system is always growing, is always evolving, you know, and you always right. are learning and, and being educated, you know. So, I right. mean, that is a life, you know, that is a life thing. You know, that's not something I wish that you think that you have just because your mother and father taught you something. You know, or to you know, uh, you know. Um, so I mean, that's the way I'm looking at it. What about you, brother um, Fahim? What, um, what's your uh, um, what's your um, perspective? Yes, uh, you said about uh, it says on the uh, the nationality card of the Moor Science Temples. It says that these uh, they pay homage to all of the uh, prophets. You know, uh, uh, Muhammad, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, Buddha. And so on, uh, because all uh, our science is a lot. It's in all of them, you know. Like the brother said earlier, uh, they all one and the same. You know, he says comedic science, and uh, I always say it, it's all more science. You know, it's a uh, comedic more science or yoga, or you know, it's all the same science, and that's how I look at it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. These, these where yeah. all of our science lie at, you know, and I, I never, I never really separate them. Mm-hmm. I always I consider them as all as one. Exactly. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, and you know what's was was interesting because again going back to the Yoruba, we have a term by the name of OGG, and OGG is what many people would relate to as chi. OGG is chi. It's the same thing. And it's that electromagnetic energy, but it's considered to be subatomic energy, you know. And mm-hmm. it again brings us now. And interesting enough, in the in the Okan tradition, you, you, oh, no, I'm sorry, not Okan. In Igbo, in Igbo, they have a, a chi, and chi is the name of, of their deity, you know. But you have in this this particular region, you know, in Nigeria, this search and understanding of subatomic beginning or subatomic energy is critical. So wherever there's a study of subatomic energy, they're going to be there. Whether it's, it's Tai Chi or whether it's Qi Gong, you're going to find someone who's really understanding the European perspective. Yeah. They're going to be there to study. Yeah. They're going to be there to learn that because subatomic energy, again, Atum Mare or Ludu Mare, dealing with the, the atomic beginnings, that's the supreme deity, the understanding of how, you know, uh, atoms form and using your mind to form them, using your um, your chi or using your ashe to create and formulate the light in the form that you want it. However we get to learn that, we're going to do it. You know, I'm speaking as someone in, in that tradition, in Ifa, in Orisha. However I can get there, whether it's, it's crystals, hugging trees, you know, Buddhism, you know, Islam, however I'm going to get there, I'm, I'm, that's, that's what the aim is. If, if there's any religion that we're shackled to, it's the study, it's the study of subatomic energy. Yes. That, that's the religion. Yes, the, yes, they are all exactly. certain stages of learning, you know, one stage of learning, another stage of learning, another stage of learning, but they all all coincide with each other, you know. It's a different level of learning, you know. That's how I see it and how I look at it, and uh, you know, uh, that's how I learned how to understand it, you know, from my perspective, you know. I'm yeah, there there are levels, and the um, the understanding even here is that one important thing I I I should uh, not definitely leave out is that when you're dealing with the the realm of the Okan. Even though you're dealing with the realm of consciousness and light and the body is made of consciousness and light, no one can actually survive in the realm of, of the Okan for an extended period of time. Hmm. Okay, so people who have tried to do that, you know, we have stories about that in Yoruba land. They've gone um, beyond what one would call crazy. Okay, so it's, it's not a place that you can be because, again, our mind here, unless unless your first eye, unless you, you unless you've experienced the rapture, and the Son of Man or Solomon to come between, you know, who's rose above the clouds, come to the clouds. So I'm talking about the pioneer coming fully online and going beyond the clouds of your left and right brain hemispheres. 
then you're still stuck in, in the world of duality. And mm-hmm. your con doesn't work on duality. And not having that sense of duality will actually drive a person insane. So the Okan is something that you would strive towards. Like, you know, one of the things we spoke about last time, Brother Ali, with the work that you do with being able to help people open up their chakras and bring their, their, their kundalini, bring that, that serpent of Dambala or Ocean Mare, bring that up the spine. Right. But it, mm-hmm. it, it's not a state that a person is going to stay for 20 years. You know, right. just everything wide open. <laughs> You know, like that. Um, just in, in the brief little moments that people do open up is when people across on the other side of the world, they see apparitions. They see what they call uh, flying saucers or flying wheels in the sky. You know, um, right. so it's not a, a state that one could necessarily maintain for an extended period in the physical body, but it's where you go. It's like, it's like school. It's where you go to learn something to get your knowing and then come back, almost like a dream state. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So I want to just kind of touch on that. Right. right. Imagine the constant flow of DMT. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> That's a good example. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Right, right, right. That's, you just imagine the constant flow of DMT. You know, DMT is said to be only be produced during the time of birth and during the time of death unless you're doing some real serious major breathing exercises and meditation techniques um, in between um, birth and death um, will DMT come online, which is actually excreted from the pineal gland as one of those spiritual substances called the spirit molecule. Um, Going back to those atomic particles and slash subatomic particles as you, or that you have mentioned it, you know, and so, yeah, um, it's very hard to imagine that, you know, you doing that, you know what I'm saying, or that being excreted your whole entire life, you know. So um, we know that is a psychedelic, you know, experience. So like what you were right. talking about, um, you know, if a person um, activates the pineal gland to that extent, then like you said, they've gone beyond um, the left and right hemisphere or, you know, they've gone beyond the duality. But they can't maintain that state because of their um you know they still have a physical body to maintain you know right right so so that's the way they have to begin to start looking at it also but these are just glimpses into um the heavenly state in which that they can obtain and will obtain um you know especially after leaving the physical body because as we always say um you know what dreams may come you know the whole point is that when you go to sleep at night you know, um, if you spend a third of your life sleep, you know, if you live to be 75, then you spend 25 years sleep and only 50 years mm-hmm. walking and talking, breathing, and doing whatever here on planet Earth. The other 25 was done um, in, you know, in the spiritual realm, you know, the same realm of sleep, you know, uh, what is called, you know, I guess you could say psychologically or in psychiatry, you know, it's called, you know, the various states of consciousness when you you know, go from gamma to beta to alpha right. to delta to theta. And, right, and so, um, yes, you might enter theta or delta theta, you know, those deepest levels, you know, which is like near-death experience or what's called out-of-the-body experience or whatever the case is, you know, but, you know, that that is for, you know, those moments, you know what I'm saying, in order to give you right. a glimpse of what, you know, happens after the... Um, the cutting of that civil cord or that ethereal cord. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's, you know, it's interesting because I brought this up on the show I did recently, and I was speaking right. about um, there, was a, there was a moment in the movie The Matrix where Morpheus, uh, the one, was speaking to Neo, the uh, inspirer, and Morpheus, um, you know, this is when he was first taking him, when he was first expelled from The Matrix, Neo. Right. And Morpheus was kind of getting him caught up to speed. And he brings him into a space and he speaks about, you know, um, what's real. You know, he's saying, is it just what you touch, see, here? So, you know, he's dealing with the five senses reality and saying, if so, then that's just electrical signals being sent to your brain. But it's a key line he said at one point when, when the image is changed and he said, welcome to the desert of the real. And, you know, what was critical about that when he said, welcome to the desert of the real, 
you know, he was speaking about, he showed him, well, this is what the earth actually looks like now. You know, he saw it, right. showed, showed it in complete desolation. But the reality is, is that even though he said, welcome to the desert of the real, and, you know, when we're thinking about a desert reality, we're thinking about uh, complete and utter contact with the environment, the forces, and the elements, because there's no, there's nothing keeping you away from your connection with the ground or with the most high. There's no obstruction. So that's one of the sciences of the desert, it allows you to really contact your physical environment and reality, and more importantly, um, not be as aware of it, even though you're contacting it because it's, it's, you're in desolation, basically. So when he said, welcome to the desert of the real, almost as if he was touching the real, but in fact he was still inside of a simulator. And right. it was noted that at that time the earth was in such condition that humans couldn't, you couldn't breathe anyway. It, so, you right. know, because of the entire ozone. So, what kind of was, was, was stated, even in kind of what you were just saying here and correlating with that, is that we couldn't touch what's real even if we wanted to because our physical bodies couldn't, couldn't withstand the fullness of what is real. We can only get reflections of what is real. That's why people say, I'm reflecting my higher self. But you, could, you couldn't even actually come in contact with your higher self fully because you'd be destroyed. And the same right. instance, Neo couldn't actually go into the real world. His body, right. you know, when we think about the concept of ether, you know, and we look at the Grecian con- concept, it was always taught that ether was the breath of the gods. It was so humans couldn't live there. Only gods could. So if you're functioning and manifesting on that level, then you can breathe ether. So he couldn't even breathe the realness of the world, but he could look at it inside of a computer simulator, and that was rough enough for him. You know, so again, relating it back <laughs> to that concept of, of um, can we really accept what's real? And on the same the same token, when we brag about being unplugged from the matrix, are we truly really unplugged from the matrix? Or are we just in a place now where we're able to see simulations that other people have not seen yet? Exactly. Mm-hmm. Good points. Excellent points, brother. Yeah. You know. Um, let's go to the phone line. Let's see. Um, we got area code two two nine. Area code two two nine. You're on the line. Greetings. Area code two two nine. You're on the line. All right. For those that want to call in, got questions? Six two six four one four thirty five thirty five. That's six two six. Four one four thirty five thirty five. Give us a call in, um, brother. Going in real deep here, so y'all got to um, ask these questions. I know there's questions out there, so give us a call once again. Six two six four one four thirty five thirty five. Press one. You want to come online? All right, brother Fahim. You have um, any comments? Yes. Uh, uh, yeah. Then we start dealing with uh, you were saying about the. Uh, breathing techniques and meditation, how we spend uh, so many uh, pain, life, and death, you know, so many times doing sleep. And uh, that was a new thing about me, uh, 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 me learning this uh, tonight. And I never thought about sleep as much. But, yeah, you can say sleep does have a big thing to do, uh, very, uh, plays a very big role and. uh Doing our life here on uh, on the planet, you know, uh, yeah, it, 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 it you know, it, the med- certain, it has something to do with certain meditation uh, exercises and things like that. And uh, you have to have so many times you need to meditate and breathe and breathing exercises along with it in order to uh, uh, clear out a lot of the antioxidants out of your body. You know, uh, I know you said um, one uh, gave one lecture that you didn't care how much you have, how much bowel movements you have, or how much you urinate, or how much you fast. But if you don't uh, put a lot of breathing exercises and meditation in there, it's not going to do you any good. You know, so. You know, with with me too about that that whole dream state that you brought up is that. the the biological purpose for dreams. Now we know this there's an esoteric spiritual purpose and the spiritual purpose is to take us to the astral realm realms where we can go to learn. Because just like 
this world is temporary. The astral realms are temporary, but we need them in order to, to get information, basically. But biologically speaking, the, the purpose of dreaming, because you'll find that the majority of the time that you dream, um, the way it's designed, the, the actual sleep cycles, like what Aline was speaking about earlier, you know, mm-hmm. going from those different shifting of the brain waves, um, different frequencies and pulsations, uh, when you're actually going into your, your dream mode, it's usually only the last six to seven minutes of your actual sleeping time. Mm-hmm. And the purpose of dreaming is actually to wake the body up. You know, and I've always found that to be very interesting, that, that mm, the that body creates dreams. Yeah. yeah, to wake you up. So then I always thought, well, if this, if this reality is a dream, what am I being awoken to? You know? Right. So, um, and and that's the watery region uh, when we're dealing with the concept of dreams and, and awakening up to your real self. On in in Ifa, when we're dealing with the um, like our divining surface, our casting surface. On the left side of that casting casting surface, we call it Oso, and Oso is spelled O S O. Uh, some might be familiar with Oso from the Arisha Ochosi Ochosi, who spelled O S O O S I, and. You know, when you break down the name Ochosi, it means the hidden sorcerer or the hidden magician, okay? Mm. Ososi is also an earlier form of Kansu. So, again, it takes us back to that nighttime blood travel. And we know that Kansu is an earlier form of Haru, you know. So it's just it's light and dark, you know, two, two aspects of the same energy. But that watery left side dream energy where Olokun lives, where Oya lives, where Oshun lives, where the ancestors live, is where we're set to really deal with our dream world, our dream life. And what's critical there, because the ancestors live there, that's a realm that we consider to be the realm of death. Hmm. Okay, and death, understanding, in this this tradition, death is synonymous with uh, luminosity. Okay, uh, death, uh, the word for death is iku, I-K-U. But the, the operative root there is ku, K-U. And ku, K-U, is the same ku in comedic structure, which is K-H-U, hmm. as, as we see it spelled, K-H-U, which means light or luminosity. So we understand that one has to go to the dark waters of death and Olokun and have to go to the, 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 the ancestor's dream in order to be illuminated, to come hmm. to the luminosity. That's the science of death. In this this particular tradition, yeah. so, so, it, it, so you saying dreams is a necessary? Dreams are necessary to wake us up. We gotta have dreams. Okay. We gotta have them. If, we, if you don't have a dream, you won't wake up. The body, right. the body needs a dream in order to awaken you. Mm. Yeah, and just like those sleep cycles are necessary, you know, as Brother Aline spoke about going from alpha to beta and going back and forth, back and forth, and, and it's it happens. It's time, it's, and the body times it so perfectly. It's very interesting. It's, it's, this is not a sloppy thing that happens when you go to sleep. In terms of you going through each mode of your sleep cycle, it's pretty exact. You know, and even the moment when you begin to, to have what we call dreams or your night visions, that's also pretty exact too. You know, uh, time begin with the moment of your awakening. You know, so again, it kind of makes us look at the valleys and peaks that we go through in our own life, even the moments where we were maybe what we call unconscious or we were dealing with low vibrational energy and how sometimes we come into a high vibration and sometimes we, we, we fall off. You know, we go back to low vibration. Okay. It's almost like that same sleep cycle and that push and pull, that ebb and flow, that, that polarizing of those dualities going back and forth is necessary for us to come to a place of understanding which will eventually awaken us out of this dream of the holographic reality. Hmm. You know? So yeah, dreams are very necessary. <laughs> to answer that question. Yeah, so although sometimes uh, when I sleep, I could be half asleep and still dreaming, you know, about something, right. you know, that. Uh, mm-hmm. But I'm not I actually sleep, and I notice uh, when I dream a lot. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm very I don't know somewhat uh, still sleepy when I actually wake up in the morning, you know. Mm-hmm. Right. 
because imagine if you spent all night at a drafting table trying to design yourself a new wing on your home. Mm. So that's what you did all night in your sleep, which is a problem. You know, when, when, you, when you rest at night, you're supposed to strictly go to the astral realm. You're using a different uh, body, your astral body, and you're doing a different kind of work. But the problem is a lot of times we go to bed with so many unresolved issues. And if you're, if you're a thinker, you know, which obviously you are, you wouldn't be on this show. If you're a thinker, then you're going to still try to work out those equations when you go to sleep. So it, 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 it doesn't stop. If you were sitting there sketching something out on paper, you're still sketching it out, but you're just now doing it in your sleep. So you basically stayed up all night working. <clears throat> you know, and that's why when you get up, you still have that, that sleepiness. It's also critical to note for the, for the family who's listening you know, when you have those those night visions, too, where, you know, uh, you're flying or you're in a different place, or more importantly, you um, invite yourself to somebody else's dream, it's very important that when you get up that you do some form of spiritual cleanse, whether it be a prayer, if that's, if that's your thing, whether it be a, a spiritual bath, or maybe just ringing a bell around your body. Because, you know, you, you have to consider that, uh, if, if you go into a place that's maybe unclean, it could be a courthouse or a police station, places like that, and you come back home, the first thing you're going to want to do is clean that energy off your body because you don't want exactly. it at home. You don't want it on your furniture. Well, the same thing occurs when you have a night business and you're traveling through the astral realms. Not all astral realms are realms of purity. You know, so when you're traveling and you come back into your body, you have to clean. Hmm. You know, so okay. this is a side note. You know, the family listening It's critical to do that but It has something to do with Cleaning out a, cleaning off a lot of negative energy That you've uh, Probably absorbed During the day Like you said at the police yeah. station Or the courtrooms mm-hmm. And you know sometimes It's just the energy that doesn't belong with you You know Whether it's, it's negative or positive At the end of the day uh, The spirit's they reside in a certain place for a reason. And the only, the only reason why they should be given and granted access over into your personal waking reality is if you intentionally invite them there and give them something to materialize in that reality. Uh, mm. Even if you don't invite them, many will try because uh, just like, you know, us, we're trying to evolve. We're trying to transform and get to the next place. Well, our mind, the womb of our mind and the matrix and the structure of our mind permeates throughout the entire universe. So because we want to evolve, now everything else wants to evolve because it's just following suit. So these same spirits, these hags, these duppies, these disincarnate bodies, they're trying to evolve into something else too. You know, you, you see that in all of the vampire movies. All of the vampires, they fall in love with humanity. You know, they got to constantly eat the blood because they want to still be able to touch things and everything. Right. They want to evolve beyond being vampires. So even Arisha want to evolve beyond being Arisha. Spirits want to evolve around being spirits because they understand that the realm that they're in is temporary. Once we all get to where we're supposed to get, there's, there's no need for that realm anymore, or those, those realms, I should say, because there's many of them. There's no okay. need for those realms, and they fade away. So if you know you're a part of that, then the best thing you want to do is latch on to somebody who has a more eternal presence. I mean, it's no different than what we see in society. We have certain groups of people who clearly are not going to make it beyond certain stages of evolution on the planet. So the best thing they can do is attach themselves to the people who seem to have the most longevity, whether right. it be through miscegenation or rape or just um, the infusing of, of their DNA through various things with these individuals. Right. Spirits think the same way. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, yeah. um, one of the things, too, is, is important with this idea of Okoran or that Odu is that it's actually symbolized by the head of twins. You know, it, it represents the human twins. And, you know, that's kind of going back to what we're saying. It's, the, um, it's that maotic link, the maotic link between your twin, between you and really your dark side, your dark side and your light side. Mm-hmm. Because when it, whenever, again, in this tradition, when we talk about matters of the heart, it's not like people think. It's not like, again, this amorous thing. In this tradition, when you start talking about matters of the heart, you're really talking about going into a very fierce and aggressive side of yourself. 
Okay, that's that's what the the heart represents because it, it represents now I'm getting ready to go into the into the forest, that, which was the term I was using earlier, and um, the forest is your, is your your darkness or even possibly your um, your your misfortune in life. You know, uh, the forest is also considered the underworld or heaven. So as we see it in this tradition, heaven is, is basically carbon. It's pure carbon. It's melanin, you know. Um, but you have to go in there. You have to go through your misfortune. You have to go through your aggression. That's why there's even a term that's used uh, in Yoruba culture when you're dealing with, like, uh, anything where a person has to assert themselves, and it's koniokan, uh, koniokan. And koniokan means this person has no heart. So, if you're not able to pull from your dark side, you're considered to be sick. There's something wrong with you. Mm-hmm. You know, even like in a football game, you hear people chanting that, Koneo Khan, because you're not really trying to run through your opponent like you're supposed to. You should be pulling from your dark side and, and annihilating the other team. There's something wrong here. Mm-hmm. You know, you have no heart. You know, So it's just very interesting when you, when you think and you look at the different – cultural understanding of the terms that we use and sometimes how we try to apply our understanding and we miss all of it. We miss the, the, the whole thing. You know? Yeah, you said people not are unable to uh, rise up from their dark side. Uh, that reminds me of something of an esoteric uh, uh, in the Bible uh, when it says that uh, when uh, Pharaoh's uh, army chasing after Moses it's all symbolic, we all know. But uh, right. uh, uh, when the uh, uh, Red Sea actually drowned them, they were drowned because water represents emotions. And mm-hmm. the, the the Egyptian army drowned because they could not rise above their emotions, so they drowned their emotions. Mm. That, 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 what you just said, that, that kind of right. you know, like coincides with that. Right, right. Yeah, you know, interesting enough, I mean, in Yoruba culture, um, and I mean, you don't even have to really know the spiritual aspect too much. You just look at Nigerians um, and understand first that Nigerians are Jamaican. So if, if anybody, if you, even if you haven't been in Nigeria, if you've been in Jamaica or you know some Jamaicans, you're looking at a Nigerian. Um, no. And, you know, if you, if you fall asleep <laughs> in, in country. In Jamaica, you know, you go to certain places, Maypen, you know, Clarendon. You go, you go out to the country, and you wake up, you don't, you won't know if you're in Nigeria, if you're in Jamaica. The people look the same, the homes look the same, they act the same. All that same fire is there, you know. So, Nigerian culture within itself is is definitely not a culture of, of reservation. It's a culture of high emotion, you know, mm. which is key. And 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 a lot of the um, stories you have even. Um, like Olokun, Olokun, the owner of the oceans, the seas. This is a very emotional and violent archetype when you're mm. dealing with Olokun. Olokun is so violent that it was said that Obatala had to chain him to the bottom of, of the ocean floor because he, he flooded the world at one point. He almost got away with it, but what Obatala did was he dropped the chain down so some people could climb up and be saved. Now, what that represented, whenever you're dealing with Olokun, not only are you dealing with the subconscious mind, but you're dealing with the sleeping subconscious mind. So that represented the time when the world became dumb, basically. <laughs> you know, when we really fell from, from, our, from our glory, and it, Obatala represents, obviously, that creative spark, the highest spark. Dropping down that chain represents that evolution, that DNA chain. He dropped down. And certain people were able to evolve. It's like what you're talking about. Certain people were able to evolve by grabbing onto that chain and climbing up and saving themselves from the flood of, of Olokun, which is really the flood of the sleeping subconscious mind. Mm. You know, so uh, it takes us back even to our understanding of, of Atlantis, you know, and, you know, Atlantis being, you know, when it sunk into the sea, that was the, the sleeping of the people, that pineal going down into the water, you know, and, and sleeping for a time. You know, for time, but it, it, you know, there's a time when that chain will be broken. You know, some people will be saved, and it's really now about natural selection. It's about those who are who are mental and spiritual alphas joining and mating with one another, and the betas are being drowned in the sea of their own emotions 
and um, sleeping subconscious. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah, so, All right, we have you know we have nine minutes left before the segment ends. Do um, you have any closing remarks, brother? Yahoo. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm here, brother. Um, yeah, I would definitely say. Um, one of the things I've been experiencing a lot in the seminars and workshops that I've been doing, and, uh, and I guess I should say if anybody wants to get in touch with me, you can always reach out via arishareligion.com, O-R-I-S-H-A, religion.com, or my school is at the saduluhouse.com, S-A-D-U-L-U, and the word house.com, uh, any questions or whatever, but... One of the things that I wanted to mention and I've been really encountering in different seminars and workshops that I've been doing lately is uh, attachments that people really have to the moral structure of what they consider to be Orisha and Ifa tradition. And um, sometimes when I start speaking about uh, how it's not so much about what you perceive to be a human morality because these spirits don't even deal in that, um, you know, I can see the hurt or the offense in people's faces. And, you know, I would say to you that now is the time, us being here in the West, this is a time for sobriety. And mm-hmm. this is a time for us to study these traditions with a with a much, uh, well, I'm going to go back to what the elders said, which is which a much, much uh, more reduced emotional perspective and standpoint. It is your emotions that's going to keep you ignorant in it. Now, we use emotions for the purposes of driving and pushing spirit in various directions. Emotions are energy and emotion. We use it. But when you're studying, you have to use your logical mind, illuminated by your spirit body. Okay, so um, just because, because a lot of times when I'm speaking, people will say, wow, this is not what I was taught before, though. You know, and... You know, you you got to be responsible for redefining and shining light on your own indoctrination. No right. one can do that for you, you know. But I really, uh, I hope, you know, I don't use that much a word much, but I really hope that my people here in this land uh, begin to study these traditions and stop looking to find new religions and new gods to serve and worship, but um, take them all in because over here, like I said, um, I have a lot of friends on the continent. You know, I'm very connected with the continent and uh, the people there. And I'm going to tell you straight up, you know, the conscious people live here. Okay, so if, you, if you're if trying to study these traditions because you want to regain some glory and you're gonna, you think you're going to go back to Nigeria and you're going to be celebrated, it's not going to happen like that. You know, the people who are really brothers, brothers like Brother Ali, you know, shows like this, people who are really breaking down this information, uh, it's not happening over there. So you mm-hmm. you got to get it. Here, you got to make it happen here, and then bring that back home, and the family will love you even more for it. Trust me, they're not offended when when I go and see these same concert, they love it, you know. So, I just wanted to kind of put that out there for all of my um, Ifa and Arisha people, uh, just to give you something to think about. So, no doubt, and also give out your websites one more time, brother. Oh, sure, sure. Okay, I can be re- reached at uh, saduluhouse.com. That's S-A-D-U-L-U-H-O-U-S-E.com. I can also be reached at uh, Orisha Religion, O-R-I-S-H-A, and the word religion.com. Uh, anyone can always send an email at questions, Q-U-E-S-T-I-O-N-S, at anunation.org. A new nation is A N U N A C I O N dot org, and uh, you can right. always give me a call at one eight hundred A New Living. Okay, one eight hundred A New Living. Appreciate you, brother. Right. Thank you, brother. I appreciate the time. Thank you for having me again. Appreciate the time, brother. All right, all right, you brothers. Enjoy your evening. Right. You too, brother. Enjoy you. Right, no doubt. Enjoy your evening, brother, and um, we definitely want you back on again. Um, I was traveling earlier, so that's why we had to, you know, up the time on it. But you know, we definitely still wanted to get you on and definitely get this information out to the people. Yeah, beautiful. beautiful. 
All right. Well, thank you. know, we just said, you know how we do what we have to do, and uh, we're, we're busy people. We're progressive people. Oh, so yeah. I understand. Yeah. All right. No <laughs> All doubt. Right. But thank you again. All right. One thank love, you. brother. All right. Peace, brother. Peace. 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 First World Order Radio, finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. Begin on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same that your thoughts transmits it. Proceed in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same that your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient history school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. <laughs>